I was quite surprised to read in the news recently about cities in the United States falling victim to the NSA's eternal blue exploit. This is a vulnerability that's been patched since two years ago, and it's used quite devastatingly well, against a couple of companies. Uh, I'm going to cite examples here that has been quite costly. So yeah, the eternal blue exploit. Something that was released by the Shadow Brokers Group that had gotten hold of a vulnerability that the NSA had discovered and had learned how to exploit. It affects the server message block version 1 in Windows from Windows XP right up to uh, it was Windows 10 version or build 1607 I think it was. So it covered quite a range of operating systems. It was particularly devastating Windows XP and Windows 7. Windows XP, of course, being unsupported for quite some time, unless you paid for the extra support. But I think that's getting quite expensive these days. So the vulnerability required SMB to be open to the internet, and it was like a worm that would get in and just try the code, or try, let's say for simplicity, try and send the vulnerable packets to the system, for the SMB version 1 system that was open to the internet and had not been patched. So it would try that and then it would get in and uh, generally there's another exploit used to uh, encrypt the files and then a Bitcoin payment would be demanded from the victim and the victims would be asked to pay some quite high amounts and instead of paying it some companies have shown what their costs were. So yeah. Oh yeah, so it's believed to have caused over one billion dollars worth of damages in over 65 countries just because the NSA decided to weaponize a vulnerability. Instead of doing the good thing and going to Microsoft, a company in their own country, both American. Yeah, so instead of doing the good thing and reporting the vulnerability, they decided to exploit it. But they didn't keep a very good enough eye on their code. It let out, it was released into the wild, and here we are. So it's designated CVE 2017-0144. So that was the systems that affected Windows XP, Vista 7, and Windows 10 up to 16.07, including all the server versions as well, so that'd be server 2003 right up to server 2016. And the attack was via crafted packets. So this was the story that I was reading, so Baltimore City government computers are infected with ransomware. So this is dated May the 7th. So it's for the second time in just over a year. Second time in over a year, so you were hit once, failed to apply the updates, failed to patch out the vulnerabilities, and you're hit again. Shocking. So critical systems include 911 and 311. Sorry, that's not a service I'm familiar with. British, don't know that. I certainly know about 911 emergency services. So yeah, it doesn't affect that, but it affects a lot of the other computer systems. Dan Norris, a professor at the University of Maryland, said the city's repeat victimization underscores how municipal governments struggle to keep computer networks safe. You've got increasingly sophisticated and very persistent bad guys. No, don't, don't big it up too much. You're just incompetence, I think, is the word here. So bad guys are looking for any vulnerability they can find and local governments, including Baltimore, who either don't have the money or don't spend it properly to protect their assets. So that was a statement. Was that... So that was a statement in 2016, if I'm reading that correctly, from the Baltimore Sun. I'm having to use Tor to look at this website. The irony as a British or even European person that I can't go and read this website due to their fear of GDPR. Oh, the thoughts that you might be uh, taking people's data and that we can't get hold of it if we want to. Or what are you doing with people's data? <laughs> Apparently 56% of this page is blocked though. But anyway, that, that's kind of an aside really. So the ransomware they were hit with has been identified as Robin Hood, a new form about which very little is known. I, I, I struggle to understand how little could be known about that, considering it uses the eternal blue as the underlying method of spreading. Oh, sorry, not spreading, but getting into computers. Yeah, the spreading part could be completely different. It just could be something like a worm. It just could be trying over and over again against different IP addresses, and here it's found one that it can get in. So everybody has been instructed to unplug the Ethernet cable and turn off the power to their computers, printers, and such. Printers? Okay, whatever. But honestly, try telling an 
non-techie person to unplug the ethernet cable and turn off their computer, how many do you think can really do that properly? Why didn't they turn off the wide area network, the broadband access point into the network, the internet access? That would stop the worm spreading there. But how many times have you seen it when you've said to someone, turn off the computer and they just turn off the monitor button? Oh, great, yeah, you can't see that computers work anymore, but it's still on. No, 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 not the way to do it. Oh, but that was not the official guidance from the city IT office, which asked people to simply leave their computers in whatever state they found them. Sounds more like it. So the ransom note demanded payment of three bitcoins per system. So that's about $17,600 at the current prices, or 13 bitcoins or 76,000 US dollars in exchange for freeing the city's system. So yeah, that's quite a sizable amount. And no doubt in some ways that might be cheaper to pay. But then that would just be funding terrorism. So the ransom must be paid within four days or the price would go up and after 10 days the city would not be able to get its data back. And who's to say they could even get it back in the first place? Probably not much chance of that. But anyway, yeah, there you are. City of Baltimore, you fell victim to a two-year-old vulnerability, or two-year-old exploit. WannaCry was one of the earlier implementations, and that cost the National Health Service in England, England specifically, 92 million as 19,000 appointments were cancelled. So that's quite a sizable amount, just for, again, not applying updates in time. Although at least that wasn't years after the updates, that was a couple of months after the updates were released. But they were still using a very old network, consisting <laughs> quite a lot of consisting of quite a lot of Windows XP systems. Doesn't surprise me. It's not surprise me one bit. Oh, but they'd also signed a deal to upgrade to Windows 10. Oh, well done, just in time. Oh wait, no, it wasn't. <laughs> Oh, there's another case of Maersk, the shipping company. So that one cost, oh, let's scroll down to the article at the bottom there, it's at 250 million US dollars. Oh, sorry, between 250 million and 300 million. That was similar to a pharmaceutical company, Merck, and FedEx. So yeah, already you can see some quite big costs appearing because of the NSA's stupidity. And there's no other way of saying it than that. They developed an exploit, did not tell Microsoft about it, lost control of the exploit, and as a result, many companies have had to pay for it. But on the other hand, you could argue that it's business's fault for not applying security updates and leaving themselves open to attack. Although thinking about it further, it could say that if the NSA hadn't discovered it, maybe some other government intelligence agency had discovered it. And by getting it out there, in the wild, in the world, and knowing about that Microsoft were able to patch it. Don't know. Anyway, that was some of the damage that the NSA has done. Well, thanks for watching. See you all later.